Man, Fortune just told me we need more content and I don't know what to do. We just need more really easy and low effort content to do. Hmm. There has been Clan Selection 2 that just came out. Maybe I could find something about that. Let's go check. Oh yeah, the pot. Yes, fish. That should be a good idea. Hello, this is Rotting Zone for TCG, and today I'll be reading a Prism deck profile for Clan Selection 2. So, Prisms in Clan Selection 2 did get a pretty good buff, with uh, Nexaria being a huge buff to consistency, and then some options you can chuck in if you want to to change up the deck a bit, maybe add in a bit more power with the Grade 2 booster, or maybe even the Grade 1 to kind of synergize with Nectaria being called from Fur or Fur being called from herself, or maybe even if you run Ange, you can use it to benefit off that and call a Tear Rod out. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the deck profile. I'll be zooming through this a bit faster since, well, I did a Prism deck profile before. I'll probably link it in the description and in the comments so you can find it easier. So, you know, starter, triggers really do not change. You have your four heal, uh, your four draw, and then a crit. I have been thinking of changing it around a bit, maybe taking out two draw PG and adding two crit sentinel. I haven't gotten around to testing that, though it is something that I would not be against testing because I believe that it can work with 10 draw solely because. Uh, is it clear? I, yeah, clear. Just get so much advantage from being called fur. It's a plus. You're going plus four during the battle phase to your hand just by doing third skill. Plus six if six if you include her bounce too. So yeah, you know it's pretty. It's pretty good. Uh, but well, let's continue on to the grade ones. You know, first off we have clear. There's nothing really much to say about clear. It's just. Top 7, you can add a grade to a higher, which synergizes with Nectaria as well. Pretty good, I do believe that they planned it like that, so it could work like that. And also, just, you know, Divine Skill, it's fucking amazing. You, 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 go, you just get more cards, and that's good. Who doesn't like more cards? And also, 10k on a force makes it 28. Very nice number. I do like making you have to drop a heal to guard it. The next we have free Sedner, you know, just really free 13k beat stick as well as great free searcher to ensure you get that fur if you somehow miss it off of clear and your roses. And then we have free Spiana. The reason why we run free Spiana is because it's it's just counter charger, and well, it got reprinted in class section, and there's no reason to run this over, say, I mean, well, there's no reason to not run this over the other counter charger you have. Which is... I forgot her name, but it's at the end of the battle with Boosted. The Vanguard, if you have no face-up CV, you kill it to do just counter charge one. Well, Spiana, she's just on place, you put a third back to the bottom of your deck. Or, you know, well, it has to be third, actually, you can't. Or Lupina or Ange, just whatever you run, and you counter charge one. Just very nice. I was about to say you could run it with Nectaria, but you're not able to, because uh, Nectaria's already four. Then we have two, uh, fuck, what's her name? Quell? I'm not sure. She's just a nice Soul Charger, a good secondary right target, just to be able to get a free rear guard out early on and get some two Soul, which is very good for my order since instead of Ange, I run Lupina. And I do not run the Lupina engine as to save space and, you know, run the good shit. So next we have the Grey Twos. I run four Rosa, of course. Very good, you know, just CB1, top 7, add any two prisms. You know, just, you can't go wrong with that skill. It's most of the time going to be at least hitting it one. Sometimes, well, like, I'm not sure about the stats, because I'm not fortune, I don't do stats all the time. But uh, I would say that you're probably going to be seeing two a lot of the time early on, and then just one most of the time. So yeah, just a very good skill. It feels like the bind zone, which you do need if you don't open Nectaria and you go second. So, you know, just super good all around. And you have Fall as well. It hasn't changed. Well, actually it did change from the start where I was a dumbass that only ran one. I have amended on my sins and I now run four. Because, you know, early advantage and getting some brutal multi-attacking, well not multi-attacking, very hard-hitting pressure. 
is super amazing. And then we have Freight Aqua. I don't run 4 because I have uh, space issues. You know, I like running the curls. I, I like running the just older grade ones, and I don't really know what to cut at 4 to 4. And I find no issue at it being a 3 because I don't really use it as attack that much. So, anyway, let's head on to the grade 3s. We have. Wait, first let me do this. Anyway. We have the 4 third, of course. You know, Triple Drive Vanguard. Just for doing what your deck needs. And then on attack, you bounce your front row, so if you call triggers off this a lot, unfortunately, you can bounce them back. And then you just call two different prisms, which you ha now have four of, so it's a lot easier. And you know, it's just a five attack deck. A four if you're going first, but you know, that's still alright. But you, you don't want to write her first, so you know what you run. Lapina, or Ange. Oh, is there anything here? I'm just thinking, is there anything else you could run? No, not really. Riviera, Pacifica, you know, just anything that generates extra force, because they're normally going to be get 4 attack deck as well, but they're generating the force to make up for that 4 attacks, unlike Fur. And you know, Lapino just very good, it's generic, it may use CV, but it's getting 5 attacks, all being about 15k guard probably, so you know, that's pretty goddamn good. And, uh, you know, I prefer over Ange because with Ange I would have to maybe put in a spot for Terra and take up more CB, and, you know, you can get CB denied fairly easily now. So, yeah. Uh, that's the Grade Freeze. And then, to finish off this deck list, we run 3, Nectaria. Personally, I am 50 50 on Nectaria. I don't mind her, but I also don't really like it that much. I don't see myself calling her often. But she is good just for the bind skill, making sure you get the two different prisms, which is normally clear and rose like in bind, to call off and just go to ham with value and help. So I think running at three, even two, is fine. Just because you have two top sevens to try well, two top seven cards to try and get her. Because unfortunately the grade three does not get her. But even if you don't get it, you're still probably gonna be fine, which is why I liked running some of it. And now I'll just go over some options that you can run now, thanks to client selection too. First option we have is Steza, and uh, what's her name? Manil. So says you know, she's just pretty good. After you boosted a Vanguard, you just retire to draw one, and then you can CB and plot deck the same, just any grade 3 actually, that's pretty good, uh, to draw one. I thought it had to be the same as Vanguard as well, but yeah, that is pretty good. The only issue is it does use CB and you already have some fair CB issues in this deck. So you run it if you really need draw, but I don't even think you need to draw that badly. Uh, because you know everything just passes in the attack, but it is a nice option. And then Myrtle, I did consider Myrtle at the beginning, because you know the on-place filter is pretty nice, but you don't mind having triggers in hand because you do need them to guard with. And there's not, nothing you really want to put in there, because in this build you're not playing Ange. Maybe if Ange you want it to put back your Tura, for example, if you want to run a one-off. And also her second skill, she is good with Nectaria, but again, I don't see myself calling Nectaria out often. So it's normally unused, which leads it to just being vanilla. But when it is used, a 33k Vanguard with Triple Drive is pretty nice when your rear guards are also hitting 30 gate-ish numbers. So that's pretty good as a grade one. I wouldn't be against running it. I would probably run it as the two of over the Soul Charger Girl. Just, you know, they're both just situational pieces you run for that situation. Another option to take up that slot would be uh, Hilda. Because, you know, she's our best girl from finally uh, three houses and now she's in Vanguard. And, you know, just being able to get boost and be a free 10k boost alongside when you call down a Nectaria to restand it is pretty nice. It just acts as an extra force in that column, and I really do love that, but it's more suited for something like Ange or Riviere, or something along those lines, where you can actually profit off it very very well. Even Lupina can pretty can profit off it well by being a 10k beat, beat stick, 20k on the force, super nice. But uh, yeah, that's all for today's video. I do hope you enjoyed this deck profile on Nectaria. Prisms is probably one of the best builds that you have in Bermuda or Real Extended at this point. 
and I am really excited to see what they do bring us for Planet Selection 3. I'm not expecting any Prism stuff, but maybe more generic stuff to support the deck. Bye bye.